Marja, following this one marja, when did it begin? You ask many people, they say to you, oh, it begins since 12th Imam. No. 160 odd years ago, we had to follow marja for the first time, one marja. When? Sheikh Al Ansari, 1850, let's say. That's the first time anyone had to follow one marja. Before that, it was in locality. You live in Baghdad, there's a scholar, there you go to. You live in Cairo, there's a scholar there. You live in Medina, there's a scholar there. Under the state, when the state first did the Safawid state, later the Qajar states, when they wanted the Maraja to get close to the ruler. So one looks after the other. One says the ruler is the shadow of Allah on earth. And the other says, we need to oversee the way Khums comes, give it all to one marja. Twelfth Imam said, give your Khums all to one marja. You see, when I touch on these issues, I'm touching with a pure heart and inquisitive mind. I'm only narrating to you what's there. I have nothing to benefit personally from anyone in this world except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The government, the marja would say they are the shadow of Allah on earth. The Safawids, some of their kings, would be called the shadow of Allah by some mujtahids. In turn, the Safawid or the Qajar would say, your khums, all of it, bring it to this man, one man. Ahl al-Bayt never said, you give your khums to one man. Do you know after 12th Imam what happened? People, do you know who they used to give their khums to at the beginning? They used to dig their khums in the ground. Bury it in the ground. When they buried it in the ground, why? Because they thought 12th Imam is going to return quickly, correct? Then after that, they dried in their wasiya to their sons. After realizing he's not coming quickly, they wrote, if he does come, then we leave our khums as your wasiya in the will. Until Alam al Halli in his time, and within works like Shara'a, you find that Khums, instead of burying it in the ground, instead of putting it in your wasiyah for your kids, use it, give Khums to the people of your local area. Therefore, the idea that Marja'iya was the same the whole way is a fallacy. Marja'iya, the idea of following one Marja, is only 150 years old. Even many argue that the first risala, the way you had to follow a proper risala in the order that we have today was in 1918. Less than a hundred years ago was the first risala that we have. Someone says, do I have to follow only one marja? Why only one? Why can't a person follow numerous marja? Yes, for practical reasons, you follow one. You're not going to read eight risalas. But why can't you follow a number of marja? Why not? All of them are professors. Someone says, but World Federation, for example, said to us that we can only follow Sayyidina Sistani. That's between you and World Federation, Habibi. Don't get me involved, yes? I'm looking at things technically. Technically, why do you only follow one? The Maraja themselves allow you in some rulings to follow other Maraja, correct? They say to you, do rujoo to others. And further than that, there are people who are allowed who say that there is no harm in you taking rulings from a number of Maraja, not just one. Some call it the concept of tab'id that you could take. Someone says, who do I have to follow? Normally they say to them, you have to follow the most learned, correct? How do you verify who's the most learned? I honestly don't know. How, who's the most learned? Do you know what they say to you? You have to ask Ahl al-Khibra, correct? The experts. I went to Ahl al-Khibra once. I said, salam alaykum, alaykum salam. Who's the most learned? They said to me, Ayatollah Wahid al Khurasani. Oh, thank you. Alhamdulillah. I went to the neighbor next door. I said, Who's the most learned? He said, Sistani. Oh, thank you. I went to a third person. He said, Who's the most learned? He said, Even if he's not the most learned, he said, Ali Khamenei is Walil Faqih. You have to follow him. Thank you. I went to a fourth person. I said, Who's the most learned from the experts? He said, Nobody has written the notes of Sayyid al Khui like Ishaq Fayyab. By the end of the day, I needed a very long sleep because my head was confused. 
وان اهل الخبره تومي سيد السيستاني وان تومي سيد علي خامنئي وان تومي وحيد الخراساني وان تومي شيخ اسحاق فياض When I looked at all of these, I began to wonder myself, you're telling me to ask the expert. The experts are giving me different names. Who's the most learned? In academia, the most learned is according to publishing, correct? How many publications you have? If it's according to publications today, then you would be surprised who would be the most learned. But I don't want to give names. So therefore, those who came and said to you, you have to follow the most learned, you say, excuse me, who's the most learned? They say, oh, ulama have said this person. We say, but these ulama said this person. And these ulama said this person. In other words, the most learned is not necessarily an infallible concept. Why not follow the learned, not necessarily the most learned? Some will say, well, in mantiq, I'm going to give you the following principles of mantiq and this one. I want to follow scholars, people who are professors in law. Say the Sistani, I want to do his taqlid. But why can't I do taqlid of Sheikh Wahid al-Khurasani? Why can't I do taqlid of Nasr al-Makarim? Why can't I do taqlid, for example, of Sa'id al-Qawhani? Why can't I do taqlid of all of these? Someone tells us says they have clashes with each other. Yes, there are clashes. No one can deny. Some say you can't talk about the clashes. Shh. You can't talk about the clashes. So when Sayyid Fadlallah is called a deviant, I can't talk. When Sayyid Fadlallah is called a deviant by Qum, a deviated deviant. We can't talk. When Sayyid Muhammad Shiraz is put under house arrest, I can't talk. Sharia Madar is placed under house arrest, I can't talk. Someone says, no, but you can't. No, 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 no. We have to look at these clashes, sadly. Envy does occur between certain groups. And these things happen. And Rasulullah said, Afat al-ulama al-hasad. The disease of the ulama is envy. Try talking to me, I'll give you a few stories.